Starting off a school year is so exciting. New school supplies, new teachers, cool new outfits, and new classes. I loved getting my schedule at the beginning of the year and comparing it with my friends to see which of our classes we were going to share. Well, choosing your classes for college is fun too, and typically involves a little bit more planning on your part. Let's get into it together. Hi. This is Mohika Nanfal, and I'm going to walk you through choosing classes in college. One of the best parts about being in college is the freedom to explore interests and the ownership you have over your education. So long as you are fulfilling your department's major requirements, you have quite a bit of wiggle room to explore different majors and minors and unique classes. In general, you must complete around 120 credits to obtain a bachelor's degree in the United States, and most students finish their degree in four years. On average, a college class is worth three credits, so this roughly translates to about 40 classes to take over eight semesters, averaging five classes or 15 credits a semester. Now here's the fun part. Most undergraduate majors only actually require 30 to 40 credits. So what are you supposed to do for all of those other credits? Well, many colleges have general education requirements, such as general English and communication courses, humanities courses, basic math and science courses, etc. In addition to your major requirements and general education requirements, you may consider exploring other subject areas that are different from your primary area of study. Many students take on a second major or minor, or just like to dabble in other departments. It is very common to see a student whose major might be computer science, with a minor in psychology, take an elective out of the music studies department. Think of it this way. College is probably the first and last time most people have access to this many different academic departments before narrowing in to their specific field or career. Use that to your advantage. The more interdisciplinary your college experience is, the more doors you may be able to open for yourself in the future. A special note for any pre-meds or students who are on a health professions track. In addition to your major requirements and general education requirements, you must also complete a series of prerequisite courses to be able to apply for medical school in the future. To find a comprehensive list of these courses, consult your college's pre-health professional advisor, look at a few different medical school's websites, or even ask us below in the comments for guidance. If you are going to pursue any post-college degrees, it is a good idea to double check if there are courses that will increase your odds for selection to those schools or that may be required for your selection to a graduate level school in that particular discipline. It's also a good idea to be mindful of how your college charges for tuition. Many colleges charge a lump sum tuition, regardless of how many credits you choose to take that semester or that year. In those cases, the world is your oyster. Take as many and whichever courses you are able to while fulfilling your requirements. Other colleges charge tuition based on the number of credit hours you are taking. Depending on your financial situation, you may want to factor that into your course planning. One common strategy is to take general education courses online or at your local community college, which typically charge less per credit hour than most undergraduate universities, and then transfer those credits to your university. Discuss transfer policies with your advisor before doing so, however, because most colleges do put a cap on the number of credits they are willing to transfer from community colleges or other institutions. The third option in charging for the courses you are taking is to cap your semester costs. Colleges will charge for 12 credits, and any credits beyond that do not cost the student. In these cases, taking more credits for free makes a great deal of financial sense. Do the research on the school you are attending to make sure you know the best scheduling for you from a financial perspective. Now the best way to keep track of all of your requirements is to plan ahead and stay organized. Your college advisor may have a course planning spreadsheet template, or you can always make your own, with labeled sections for each quarter, semester, year, depending on how your academic calendar is run. Here's a pro tip. 
color coding your general education requirements versus your major and minor requirements versus fun electives is super, super helpful, especially if you are a visual learner. Using the course catalog at your university, you will want to pick out which classes you need and want to take and plug them into your planning document well before registration day. That way, you can plan ahead and make sure you are on track to graduate. As each semester passes, update your spreadsheet with the courses that you've knocked out and which ones are left on your list. By staying organized, you will be able to maximize each semester to its fullest potential by taking the right courses at the right time. Many students are even able to graduate early or find that they want to stay an extra semester or two to accomplish everything that they would like to. Now, registration day. Most colleges designate a few days for course registration days, and this process is largely done online. Registration for the following semester or year happens months before that semester or year actually starts. Rising seniors typically get their first pick at courses, followed by juniors, sophomores, and then freshmen. In my experience, registration looks something like this. We would log on to the course registration platform the day before registration opened and added all of our desired courses for that semester into a shopping cart as if we were shopping online. Then. At 7 a.m. the next day, when registration opened, we all frantically hit the register now button. The platform would work like magic and suddenly we would see which of our courses we were successfully enrolled in. Now, what happens if you don't get all of your classes? This is quite common, especially at larger institutions when a lot of students need to take the same courses. For classes that you don't get a spot in, you may be put on a wait list. So if someone decides to drop that course before the semester starts, you might be able to take their spot. Most universities will allow students to change their schedules up to a week or two into the semester. So there is a decent shot you have at waitlist movement, and you can change your mind if you decide that a certain class just isn't for you. A good way to prevent this from becoming a problem is to have backups. Remember that spreadsheet we talked about? Be sure to include some backup options in there and have them ready to go in case you don't get your first picks at classes. For example, maybe you tried registering for statistics on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays and got waitlisted. For a large and common class like that, keep the Tuesday, Thursday section as a backup. Another example, maybe you wanted to take a special French literature seminar this semester, but it only has 20 seats. Given that upperclassmen have priority over you, an underclassman, you might want to put that on your list for next semester. If you already know what your major is going to be in college, congratulations. And if you don't know, congratulations. Most people don't know what they're going to study when they first start college. Take your best guess for which department may sound interesting and use that as a starting point. Remember, many majors have common prerequisites in the first year and you can always change your mind. Your first stop is going to be your majors or departments website under some tab that says requirements, where you can see a list of which courses you will need to take to complete your major. If you are unsure of where to find this information, meet with your advisor and ask them for guidance. Typically, there is an order in which you need to take your required courses so that they are evenly spread out over your four years. Your major's required courses, plus your general education courses, if applicable, should be your first priority to sign up for on registration day. Now, once you have successfully enrolled in these courses, you can add other courses. If you have any parallel interests, take courses from those departments. Add variety to your schedule as if it were a salad that you're actually going to enjoy eating. You've got your leafy greens, which are your major requirements, and your cucumbers, which are your general education or pre-med requirements. Now you get spunky with it. Add your avocados, like art classes, your berries, like a seminar on how COVID impacted climate change. Adding variety to your weekly schedule is going to help add a sense of balance to your academic life and can be really helpful for your mental health. My personal rule of thumb as a neuroscience major was to take no more than three science-related courses in a semester. I love science, but in fact, some of my favorite courses were from the business and sociology departments. 
One final consideration when picking your courses, be efficient. If you had the opportunity to take IB and AP courses, dual or concurrent enrollment courses in high school, check whether your college will accept those test scores or earned credit courses for credit in their programs. At many universities, you may be able to waive the requirements for introductory math, science, language, and humanities courses if you did well enough on your IB and AP exams. Top tier colleges typically have stricter guidelines about this. Another option to look for is called testing out. Your university may offer you an opportunity to demonstrate your proficiency in a subject by taking a test. The most common name for these tests is CLEP. If you score high enough, you may be able to waive the introductory level courses for that subject and be placed in the intermediate or advanced level. This is most common with math and foreign language courses. Every credit counts, so any credits you are able to waive off through your IB, AP, or proficiency tests can lead to some serious savings, time and money-wise. Your academic advisor is there to answer questions on the process, provide advice on building your schedule semester by semester, and help you determine if pursuing a minor or second major will work out for you. Have honest conversations with your advisor, and be sure to be clear about what you need from them. However, it is your responsibility to make sure that you meet graduation requirements. It is your responsibility to make the most of your time in college academically. And it is your responsibility to know what you need from an academic perspective and for your future career. Stay organized, know what you need to move forward after college, and make the most of your opportunities to expand your horizons through your coursework. The courses you take in college have a significant impact on your overall experience and can really allow you to grow as a scholar as well as a person. If you found any of this information helpful, hit the like button or consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or comments, let us know in the comments below.